All right, here we are in week three. You may be wondering uh, where the last two matches of week two. Uh, well, for whatever reason, the Cyanide game server didn't save the replays, so um, I'm just choosing to move into week three instead. I could not tell you why it did that, but it did, so here we are. I know I'm a little bit behind with these, so I'm just going to try and uh, catch up while I can. Anyway, starting off here, first match of the week, we have Weed Gang versus Blinken's Bruisers. This is Orcs versus Goblins. Uh, the main notable thing to mention here is that before this match, uh, the goblin player actually opted to sell both of his trolls so that uh, there would be some free petty cash given for inducements before this match. Other than that, I don't think there are any significant changes, uh, so let's just go ahead and get right into it. Okay, here we are at the starting formations. The goblins are defending first, probably not the position that they want to be in, but uh, you know, they, they do have the tools to take care of it. Uh, I forgot to mention that the goblin player, in addition to selling two of his trolls, also bought um, a permanent bombardier for the team. And I believe the inducement phase for this match uh, got one bribe. And let's see, I believe two goblins yeah we got one here who was leveled up to be given sidestep uh and then another level one goblin lineman in the substitutes right now so just kind of padding out the team a bit more anyway if we're looking at the starting formation here put the thematic on the front line in the middle that's uh pretty good you, you know that's that's where you put them uh put the chainsaw right on the line of scrimmage you know that would probably be fine if you're playing offense but when you're playing defense that's really dangerous because the chainsaw even though it is capable of taking down much larger players only has two strengths so it has a, pretty much no defensive ability uh so you really have to be careful with that but the fanatic is going to be key to this match for sure because the fanatic is what enables the goblins to actually stand on equal footing with a higher strength team like the orcs especially when they have four black orcs with four strength and then you have the troll here with five strength uh playing defense didn't really need to have a goblin in the back but that doesn't matter too much they're fast moving on to how the orc player sets up let's go ahead and take a look i'm gonna turn the overlay off here because i don't want to look at that <clears throat> all right very aggressive formation here just putting all the players on the line of scrimmage probably probably just fine to be honest uh considering that the goblin team is at as such um, such a significant strength disadvantage. Uh, I mean, it makes sense that you're going to go ahead and just put all your players on the team. The, like, the orcs don't need to worry here about losing uh, a block. Anyway, very sunny weather, which means there's going to be uh, a penalty to passing rolls. Kick is a touchback, and it's given to the goblin. Um, in this situation, I probably would have just given it to a blitzer, honestly. You got him right on the line already, and like I said, it's going to be hard to knock a player down for the goblins, so... Not really any need to, to put it on your one weakest player on the orc team, but all right, starting off strong, gets a, a KO on the on one of the goblin linemen. I believe push back the fanatic too with red dice on the troll, which is uh, impressive. <laughs> Moving the players up. <clears throat> Following through on punches here, this is good. Uh, previously, I think the uh, the orc coach here was having some difficulty with not following through on hits, which was making it a little tricky to gain ground. Immediate KO on the chainsaw player. Like I said, it's uh, pretty much to be expected. <clears throat> I mean, the, the KO is unfortunate, but I'm not surprised that the chainsaw got hit. So he's already out, unfortunately. <clears throat> Goes for a pass with the goblin. Uh, probably should have just done a handoff. Like I said, that was a 17% chance. You have stunty, which means that you're worse at passing to begin with. And then you also have negative one from very sunny. So that, that was a really bad move. Goblin player moving the fanatic around. Makes it going for a roll and fails it. Luckily, has a re-roll, which saves it. Uh, in general, I would say never make a going for a roll with your fanatic because if they fall down, they at least guarantee get knocked down. You don't want that. Unfortunately, it doesn't hit anything with a fanatic. Fails the dodge with the goblin. Orc player going in for more hits here. Gets a stun. Orc is doing what orcs do. Goes for a red die roll. Uh, again, I would advise that you, if at all possible, never make a red die roll. 
But of course, because it was a boast down, the Fnatic did not knock himself down and he went for the push instead. Uh, because honestly, it would probably be worse to have the, net, the Fnatic on the field than to get the hit on the trolls. So it worked out for the Orc player. Fnatic goes moving in on the Goblin turn, immediately knocks down the troll. That's nice. Gets a push on the Black Orc. He's trying to use the, uh, the Fnatic there to just kind of push stuff around as much as it can. Navigating some goblins in to go for the ball, making some good dodge rolls. This is the power of a team that has a, you know, stunty and dodge like this, is that they can usually weed through the enemy line and get where they need to go. That was insane. That was like five or six dodge rolls there, all made. Very, very nice for the goblin player. Unfortunately, he doesn't pick up the ball, but he gets kicked back in and goes to a different player, so it worked out, but that is going to be a turnover. And you can see it's going to be a little bit tricky for these orcs on this side of the field to actually get over and do anything about that with the Fnatic in the way. And of course, another red die block against the Fnatic results in a uh, attacker down. If you're going to try and outstrength the Fnatic, you need to uh, make sure that you were doing it by um, assisting. I mean, optimally and ideally, you don't want people to be near the Fnatic in the first place, but of course, the Goblin player wants to keep pushing people towards the Fnatic, wants to make sure people are near the Fnatic because he's tying people up. Uh, but if you are um, somebody who's facing against the mechanic, you probably just want to avoid it. Even if you're a higher strength team like this, it's just, it's a lot of work for you to come and try and knock it down. It takes too many players. Fortunately, fails a dodge roll here against the Goblin, but the ball is moving up the field. Goblins in distance for, or in range for a touchdown, I should say. Definitely in range for a touchdown. Orc player using a blitz here against a goblin lineman. Just look. Probably could have blitzed with this player to hit the ball carrier, and that it would have been a couple going for it rolls, but that probably would have been um, ideal here because you want to get the ball away from the other player. Blitzing this lineman doesn't really do anything for you. Remember that you only have one blitz per turn, so you want to use it as wisely as you can. Uh, again, just trying to knock down this fanatic. And, it, you know, I'm assuming the logic here is that uh, you want to get the fanatic off the field so you don't have to deal with them for the rest of the game. And that's, that's totally fair. I get that. But you have to remember when you're going up against these secret weapon players, they have secret weapon. So if you want to just get them off the field... End the drive. Score a touchdown. Let your opponent score a touchdown even, perhaps. Uh, you know, it's. I think it's easier to get rid of secret weapon players just by scoring a touchdown uh, than it is, um, you know, actively hitting them most of the time, especially a character like the Fnatic. You just, you, you just cannot win. Like, seven strength is a lot. It's very hard to overcome that. Once again, moving a goblin and orc player over here to this lineman. But this lineman isn't doing anything. Don't worry about him. Move your people to the ball carrier. Focus on the ball. See, the goblin player is putting in the corner here. So I kind of want to talk real quick about why he's doing this and not scoring a touchdown. So because the goblin player only has one bribe and he has so many secret weapons, you have to remember that at the end of every drive, the secret weapon players are going to be red carded. The bribe allows you to try and negate that, but every single time that a drive ends, it's going to happen. So the idea behind a bribe is that you get to keep your secret weapon players on the field longer. Now, what that also means is that it's kind of in your best interest that you score on the last turn that you can, because if you can score on the eighth turn at the end of the half, that would mean you only have uh, one instance of a red card, right? As opposed to if he scored right now, there would be a red card then and right now could maybe use a bribe on it, but then the player would definitely be going off uh, at the end of the half. So the, the, the kind of idea here is like maybe you can stall out the, the half for a little bit. You know, uh, the ball carrier is right next to the corner. Uh, it has one orc in range, but isn't necessarily in danger. So maybe you could see how things go, right? On the other hand, another thing to consider is that you are seriously outstrength as this team. 
And the more turns that you sit around doing this, the more opportunities that you're given to orcs to just punch you over and over if you're not, uh, you know, uh, moving your players away when you should be. So there's a lot of factors to consider here. Really what it comes down to, though, is that, um, you know, you could try and run up the clock a little bit, but you have to understand when you need to just go for the touchdown. Right now, probably safe. Especially if, uh, you know... It would be better to take these two goblins and have them kind of like cover this area over here rather than be up on the ball carrier because if you're going to try and do this you want uh this orc to not be able to get close to the ball carrier right now he could just run around and go hit him um but if you put these two goblins kind of spread out a little bit you could create a situation where the orc isn't really able to get through their tackle zones and then he wouldn't be able to just blitz the ball carrier so uh, this is a little bit too tight of a defense you want to spread out a little bit but um you know, otherwise the goblins aren't like terribly in danger. Unfortunately, fails to dodge, injures himself. Luckily, stunty players, for the most part, um, I, I believe part of the stunty trait is that they are less likely to have um, an injury that puts them out for a match. So, Black Gork comes over to assist the troll and stand him up. Still going after that fanatic, it looks like. And I mean, this right here is kind of ideal for the for the goblin player because now you can just hit a bunch of people. Like, the, the goblin wants people surrounding the fanatic because you want people to run into and people to hit. So it, it, it's kind of a um, counterintuitive strategy to have your orcs surrounding them like this. You just want to avoid them. Just avoid the fanatic. Because otherwise the fanatic could be getting up to like three even five hits a turn if he was really bold and do you want to give your opponent five hits with a single player probably not all right we see here that because that defense was a bit too tight the thrower's gone in is now marking the ball carrier so it's important that the uh goblin player should probably score right now like at this point i would say all right the the strategy of stalling is not going to work out. There's there's too much of a threat. So let's get that player pushed away and just score the touchdown. Goes for the hit. Goes for the push. But push is straight. Should have probably just pushed to the left there. Because now the ball carrier has to dodge into a tackle zone. Which is not ideal. Has to make a dodge at all. If you push to the left, the ball carrier wouldn't be marked. But now the ball carrier is still marked. So... That's uh, not a good situation to be in, especially when you have less strength than that thrower does. He can very easily push the goblin off the field. Fnatic going back in here, trying to get some hits like I was talking about. Gets a hit on the blitzer. Okay, moves this goblin around, goes for another push, but now it's now it's too late because now you're already in a situation where you've, you've pushed him to the wrong spot. Goes for the handoff, 50% catch. Um, you know, obviously trying to score a touchdown here, but I have to ask, why did you go, what, like, why go for the handoff here, which is only a 50% chance when you can just dodge out and go into the touchdown with a person already carrying the ball, which is in, uh, you know, a 67% chance, plus you get the free reroll off of dodge. So. Um, kind of a mismanagement of odds here. Luckily, it doesn't lose control of the ball. And he has surrounded that thrower, so... Not too bad yet. Goes for a red die roll and the ball carrier gets the hit. Gets an injury even with the thrower. Where's the ball going? Ball bounces. Lands in the same spot. Goblin picks it up. Gets away with Stunty. Very nice. Has dodge. Passes it off. Moving the ball all the way down the field. And in fact, um, you know, again, you can... 
make a handoff and a pass in the same turn. So in theory, this Blitzer could have even passed to the Black Orc. Not that that's a good idea, but he could have um, just to like get even more distance with the ball. When you have the uh, players that are kind of spread out like that, uh, keep in mind how your opponent is setting up their players to do a long play like that. They can get the ball uh, over a considerable distance um, if you're not paying attention. I mean, we saw that with the Skaven in the last match, right? In the uh, in the last video, went all the way from one end of the field, scored a touchdown. Ah, uh, okay. So there was a little bit of confusion here when this happened. I remember I was watching this match. So, about why the goblin um, ended up um, ended up falling down. So let me just kind of explain what happened here. Um, see if we can rewind a bit. Okay. Remember that the Fnatic has three movement. So that's one move. Two moves. Third move is this hit right here. All right. Any more actions now are going to be, uh, going for it rolls so you can move two more spaces but it's going to be a going for it roll you've already moved your three movement now normally when you are attacking with a player you need to have at least one movement uh like you have to be able to have movement to follow into the opponent's space otherwise you're not able to make that attack you'll see that if you're on like the if somebody's on the edge of your movement range and you have to make two going for it rolls and you try to hit them it won't let you uh, because y you have to have enough movement to account for the fact that you would be following onto their space. Even if you don't choose to, you have to have enough. So, right here, that's another move. That was a going for it roll, you can see. Now, it's a little bit different with the Fnatic. Normally, you would make the going for it roll before the hit. But in the case of the Fnatic, the block is not treated as um, an action. It's treated as like a side effect of the movement. So in this case, he moves forward and pushes the person out of the way with a block before the going for it roll is actually made. Then the going for it roll is made, fails, falls down, knocks himself out. So a little bit confusing, but that's what happened there. But he did get the ball away from the ball carrier, so that's a turnover. See, now the orcs are on turn seven here. Remember that uh, half the field is 12 spaces, so technically the orcs are in range to score here. Well, actually, they both stood up, so I'm not sure if they really are in range to score now that I think about it. Let's see, lose three, so it can move one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one, two, three. Mm, no, these blitzers are not in range to score. Unfortunate. And opts to pick up with the black work. Probably should have just picked up with the blitzer. They have higher agility. I think... Let me just double check here. One, two, three, four. So, the only way that the orcs could have secured a touchdown from that position is if they were to pick up the ball with one of these blitzers and then hand it off to a black work over here. Or actually, uh, maybe even this lineman or this blitzer, and then move that player up the field. Um, but unfortunately, opted to go with the black work first. Probably should have gone blitzer, pick up the ball, move, pass, or handoff actually, uh, and then run it up the field. So unfortunately, I believe the the touchdown opportunity is now gone. But um, that would have been uh, how you would have done it right there. Now the goblin player, uh, you know. It technically could get a touchdown, um, but it would require a pass, which just isn't going to happen. Uh, let's see. Could move the goblin here, pick up the ball. That's going to be three spaces. Could move three spaces out, put them over here somewhere, maybe make a going for a roll, and then maybe on the next turn, if they're still standing, they could pass it off to another goblin and get for the touchdown, but um, that's a lot of maybes. Oh, but he does get the ball and he does get away. 
Yeah, and then goes for the pass. Um, you know, it was a really low chance. Does get the pass. Oh. Unfortunately, fails the catch, but actually is in range for a touchdown here. Okay, okay. Let's see what happens. All right, unfortunately, the Orc Goblin picks up the ball and passes it right back. Wow. That is a, a bold move. And that, that was a Hail Mary right there. Um, but, man, it paid off. Damn. Great play by the Orc coach there. Great play. So nobody's getting a touchdown this half, but he just uh, made sure that the Goblin isn't going to get a touchdown, that's for sure. And I mean, what's a goblin to do at this point? I mean, <laughs> you can't get the ball back now, so you might as well just see if you can injure somebody. Pushes the thrower off the edge of the field. Crowd surfs. Unfortunately, no injury. And that's halftime. So we're still 0-0. Zero, zero. Very close to a touchdown for the goblin player multiple times. Uh, but unfortunately, just couldn't quite get it. Uh, probably... You know, definitely could have gone a touchdown uh, if that thrower was knocked just one to the left in the uh, in the end zone instead of straight forward. So the Fanatics back up. Red cards are going to be coming out. All right, so that I need to pause here and explain what just happened because that was pretty quick. Um, so here we have Look Mug who is the Goblin Fanatic, uh, and he woke up after his knockout. Our Unlick, who is the Looney, the Chainsaw Goblin, did not wake up. Now, they were both knocked out, so they both get a red card because they had the potential to wake up, and they both played that drive. When the coach sent out the red card, uh, he sent out the red card for the Goblin Chainsaw Looney first. Now... What happened here is that the goblin coach actually used the bribe on the chainsaw goblin uh, by accident instead of waiting to use it on the fanatic who woke up. So unfortunately, um, the fanatic ended up getting sent off the field and it's not usable for this drive. Now, if a touchdown were to happen, there would be another opportunity for this uh, for this loony to wake up and then he could be used. But because he's knocked out right now, um, he, he cannot be played on this drive, obviously. But he's not at risk of being red card again. But this means that the bombardier is now forced to play on the field to make up for the player difference. Now the Bombardier is a fun player. The Bombardier actually does pretty well against teams like this because if a, a stronger strength team or a higher strength team manages to get a cage going, it can be very, very difficult for the Goblins to get the ball out of a cage like that. And the Bombardier enables you to do so by just tossing a bomb into that group of players and then they all get knocked down and you can swipe the ball out from under them. So typically you want to have your Bombardier farther in the back line uh, and it's it's a, just a way for you to try and um, secure a ball that was taken by the, the enemy team because goblins are pretty much never going to win uh, in a you know in a one-on-one -on -one fight they're not going to be able to break cages they don't have the strength to do it so the bomb is the way to do it both teams lose a turn from the kickoff event decent kick by the orcs Looks like the Goblin Coach is going to play to the right side of the field. Pulling his players back. And Orcs are slow, so it's going to be pretty difficult for the other half of the team to come over and actually help on this side. But unfortunately, uh, this has allowed the Orc Coach to just get a bunch of free hits. Uh, when you're playing a team like Goblins, you want to, whenever you can, avoid leaving your players in opposing tackle zones at the end of your turn because then you're just giving them free hits into the next turn. You want to try and keep them one back, one away. You want to force your opponent to blitz and deprive them of as many hits as you can. That's just how it is for um, pretty much any Agi team. That's how, uh, you know, you play Elves too.
Luckily, the orc coach only got a couple hits. So, not too bad. Really ganging up on this one goblin here. <laughs> Dodges with the Bombardier, gets him out of there, moves the ball carrier up. Unfortunately, he fails to dodge with another goblin. And doesn't use a reroll. But the ball carrier is moving up the right side of the field. It is in a, a decent spot right now, I would say. He's about to have an orc on him. Oh no, the orc coach didn't follow through with that one. Interesting. Ah, that makes sense. Wanted to blitz with the thrower. And he does manage to do it. Good play by the orc coach there. And now that lineman is injured. The ball went off the field. Let's see where it gets thrown in. And oof, way back towards the goblin end zone. That's not good. Another injury for the orcs just clearing out the team. This is what happens over the course of a match if... Uh, if, if you just keep marking players like this, you're just going to lose to attrition. Now the orc coach can definitely, yep, move this lineman down. Maybe don't want to use that lineman because as you can see, he has the loner trait. This is a fill-in player, meaning that the orc coach did not have 11 players going in this match. So you probably want to try and score the touchdown with um, a different player. Probably, I don't know, like a, this blitzer, you know? Because any skill points earned on that lineman, uh, you're not going to end up keeping. Anyway, the orc coach goes for a foul. Oof. Injures this goblin here. Minus one agility. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, that's an unfortunate um, injury. But the goblin coach manages to sneak the ball. Gets the bombardier back to cover him. Real quick before we continue this, I just want to talk about that injury. Um, so, I usually say save your apothecary. I'm not sure that the goblin player even has an apothecary. I can't remember. Um, I usually say save your apothecary for, uh, you know, a stat reduction injury or worse. So basically a stat reduction or death. Now, when it comes to the stat reduction injuries, depending on what that reduction is, you might just leave it. You know, if it's on a lineman and it's uh, an armor injury or maybe even a movement injury, you, you probably don't need to worry about it. They're linemen. They don't move around much anyway. They're kind of there to get hit and help hit. So that doesn't matter too much. But on a goblin team, you already only have two strengths. And then you have three agility, which is kind of average. So having two agility and two strengths, that's really bad. You You don't want that. So um, that's definitely an injury I would have used an Apothecary on. Again, I can't remember if this player has an Apothecary. Um, if they don't, to be completely honest, at the end of this match, I would just fire this player. I think they, that having two strength and two agility means that they're not, uh, they're not worth the team value that they add to the team, and they're just kind of inflating your team value. So I, I would definitely say that uh, Nakrag's Blood Bowl career is over. <laughs> Time to retire. And sometimes you have to think about that when you have an injured player. Sometimes it is better to just fire that player and buy a new one because they are not good enough to justify the team value that they add to your team. Uh, because having overinflated team value on your team can be a problem sometimes. That means that you're giving a lot of free petty cash to your opponents at the beginning of matches, which lets them buy more inducements, and you just don't want that. So, Unfortunately, Fields is going for it roll with another goblin. Gets another injury. With so many turns left and hardly any players on the field, the, the goblin coach really needs to get the ball away from their end zone. Okay, unfortunately the troll gets a really stupid proc. We got a black orc going in. Doesn't go for the goblin. Ooh, and fails a going for a roll. Unfortunate. The orc coach is all out of rerolls at this point. This gives the goblin coach an opportunity to bring the ball away from his end zone. I probably would have blitzed with that black orc, to be honest. Just to hit the ball carrier. So 
so far away from the other team. You know, it is possible the Goblins could get a little bit of a lead here and manage to go for the end zone, but it's not very likely. Now roll with the troll. Not something you usually want to take, but uh, it gets the ball carrier down in this case, so it's probably the right move. Can the goblins get the ball back out? No, it goes for the pickup of the bombardier. It does get the ball. Goes for a pass. Good pass. Fails the catch roll. Re rolls. Remember, it is still very sunny weather. Fortunately, does not catch the ball, but the ball is on the opposing side of the field and next to a couple goblin players, so it could be swooped in the next turn. Alright, the orc goblin picks it up. The hit made on the bombardier. Fortunately, it doesn't knock him down. Another hit coming in. And yeah, does knock him down. Orcs have three turns left, so it's, it's really important um, that the orc coach just immediately start running the goblin on the next turns towards the end zone. A touchdown is definitely possible here. Doesn't even need to make any going for it rolls, actually. Alright, Goblin player stands up. Um, so the Bombardier here, uh, seeing how clustered these guys are, may not be a bad idea. Just toss a bomb in there and see what happens. I mean, it's not a cage, but why not? Oof. Unfortunately, he fails a stun roll or a dodge roll here and gets knocked out. Not that there's much left to do at this point, anyway. All right, orc coach, move the goblin. Move the ball first. You can do it safely. You can get a touchdown without doing anything else. Oh. And unfortunately makes a dodge roll. And fails it. Well, that's a touchdown gone. <laughs> Lots of failed dodge rolls this match. Jeez. <laughs> oh, boy. Just l let me let me see real quick. Just okay. <laughs> the orc coach can technically still get a touchdown here. Technically, move that goblin. Pass to the blitzer. Nope. Nah. Oh. Nah. Well, I kind of saw it. You could have ran the goblin this way, down here, done a handoff to the blitzer, and then the blitzer could have made the touchdown so had the right idea just kind of went about it in the wrong way unfortunate well that's the end of the match uh <laughs> another exciting match from the green skins there i'm sure that we will get some more of those in the weeks to come uh let's take a look at the skill points here a decent amount of skill points earned on the uh orc teams not too bad but unfortunately not very good for the goblin team anyway uh, that's that match done and uh, i will see you in the next one